Thank you. Thank you so much. What a crowd, what a crowd. And outside, we have many more people than this outside. It's incredible. Incredible. Really incredible. Thank you very much. And it's great to be back in Florida, my second home, as you know. We love Florida. This was a great victory for us in the primaries, and this is what's going to take us over the top in the general election, November 8th. And we're going to make our country great again. We're going to do some, some job. Thank you. As you know, we're doing very well in the polls, and we're leading in many, many states, including the great state of Florida. And we do expect to win Florida. I really expect it. It's going to happen. We're going to win Florida. We're going to win back the White House. And we are going to be so happy with winning again, right, for a country. Our country is going to win again. But today, we have some very, very serious matters to discuss. Let me begin by thanking our incredible law enforcement officers who don't get the credit they deserve. But when I'm president, they will get the credit they deserve. What a fantastic job they do. What a fantastic job they do. Incredible. There have been Islamic terrorist attacks in Minnesota and New York City and in New Jersey. These attacks and many others were made possible because of our extremely open immigration system, which fails to properly vet and screen the individuals or families coming into our country. Got to be careful. Attack after attack, from 9-11 to San Bernardino, we have seen how failures to screen who is entering the United States puts all of our citizens, everyone in this room, at danger. So let me state very, very clearly, immigration security is national security. My opponent has the most open borders policy of anyone ever to seek the presidency. As Secretary of State, she allowed thousands of criminal aliens to be released into our communities because their home countries wouldn't take them back. They didn't want them. They didn't want them. They were too bad. They said, keep them, United States. We don't want them. And she did nothing about it. Now, she wants a 550 percent increase in Syrian refugees above the high numbers we already have. Altogether, her plan would bring in 620,000 refugees in her first term with no effective way to screen them or vet them. Law enforcement said there is no way. Her plan would cost $400 billion in terms of lifetime welfare, benefit, and entitlement costs. You can't have vetting if you don't look at ideology. And Hillary Clinton refuses to consider an applicant's worldview and thus their likelihood of being recruited 
into the terror cause at some later date, which is going to happen in many, many cases. This isn't just a matter of terrorism. terrorism. This is also really a question of quality of life. We want to make sure we are only admitting people into our country who love our country. We want them to love our country. And we want them to love our people. We support immigration that strengthens and uplifts our nation. People who come here, they support our values, and they want to uphold our Constitution. My highest duty as President is to protect our citizens and to uphold the Constitution of the United States. I will honor that duty to the fullest extent every single day, and I will never waver, and I will tell you that I consider a sacred obligation. Sacred. It's just a plain fact that our current immigration system makes no real attempt to determine the views of the people entering. Since 9-11, hundreds of immigrants and their children from high-risk regions have been implicated in terrorism and terrorist-related activity in the United States, hundreds and hundreds. The Senate Subcommittee on Immigration, chaired by Senator Jeff Sessions, who is a truly great senator and man, has released this information in great detail and we encourage you all to look it up. Now we learn today that another 858 immigrants from dangerous countries have slipped into our country and have been granted full citizenship despite pending deportation orders. These are people that were supposed to be deported, and they were given full citizenship. They made a mistake. This is totally unacceptable. Altogether, there are nearly one million individuals in the United States with deportation orders who have not yet been removed. In the 20th century, the United States defeated fascism, Nazism, and communism. Now we must defeat radical Islamic terrorism. Yet the President of the United States or my opponent and both won't even say the words radical Islamic terror. In fact, Hillary Clinton talks tougher about my supporters than she does about Islamic terrorists, right? She calls the patriotic Americans who support our campaign many of them cops and soldiers, deplorable and irredeemable. And she means it. <laughs> millions and millions of people. Has she ever talked that way about radical Islam? No. Or about those who oppose and murder women and gays overseas? Has Hillary Clinton ever called people who support these practices deplorable and irredeemable? No. In many countries overseas, non-believers face the death penalty. Where is Hillary's condemnation there? There is no condemnation. Let's ask Hillary Clinton how many people who subscribe to radical Islamic views and support the oppression of non-believers would you call deplorable or irredeemable or are those words reserved only for hardworking Americans that truly love our country and they want to make a statement? <laughs> to hear the words Hillary Clinton uses, one could be forgiven for getting the impression 
that she thinks these hardworking Americans are somehow a greater threat to our country than Islamic extremists. This summer, there has been an ISIS attack launched outside the war zones of the Middle East every 84 hours. Here in America, we've seen one brutal attack after another. Thirteen were — I mean, have you ever seen anything? That's what's going on with our country. And we don't do anything. Thirteen were murdered, and 38 were wounded in the assault on Fort Hood. The Boston Marathon bombing wounded and maimed 264 people and ultimately left five dead, including two police officers, and so badly wounded. In Chattanooga, Tennessee, five unarmed Marines were shot and killed at a military recruiting center. Last December, 14 innocent Americans were gunned down at a party — think of it — an office party in San Bernardino, and another 22 were horribly injured. In June, 49 Americans were executed at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, and another 53 were injured terribly. It was the worst mass shooting in our history and the worst attack on the LGBTQ community in our history. In Europe, we have seen the same carnage and bloodshed inflicted upon our closest allies. In January 2015, a French satirical newspaper, Charlie Hebdo, was attacked for publishing cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. Twelve were killed, including two police officers, and 11 were wounded. Two days later, four were murdered in a Jewish deli. In November 2015, terrorists went on shooting, and they just went on a rampage. And this you heard, and you'll never hear the end of it. One of the worst things that anybody has ever seen, they went on a rampage. They slaughtered 130 people and wounded 368 people, so gravely wounded that many are still in the hospitals. And they'll never be the same. In March of this year, terrorists detonated a bomb in the Brussels airport, killing 32 and injuring 340 people. This July, the south of France, an Islamic terrorist turned his truck into an instrument of mass murder, killing 85 men, women, and children, and wounding 308 people. Among the dead were two Americans, a Texas father and his 11-year-old son. Shortly after that, in Germany, a refugee armed with an axe wounded five people in a gruesome train attack. Also this summer, an ISIS killer invaded a Christian church in Normandy and forced an 85-year-old priest to his knees and slit his throat right before his congregation. Overseas, ISIS has carried out one unthinkable atrocity after another. Christians driven from their homes and hunted for extermination. ISIS rounding up what it calls the Nation of the Cross in a campaign of genocide — horrible genocide. We cannot let this evil continue. <laughs> cannot do it. Cannot do it. Nor can we let the hateful ideology of radical Islam, its oppression of women, gays, children, and non-believers, be allowed to reside or spread within our country. Just can't do it. We will defeat radical Islamic terrorism, just as we have defeated every threat we have faced in every age before. But we will not defeat it with closed eyes or silent voices. Anyone who cannot name our enemy is not fit to lead this country.
Do we love our country? Do we love our country? Thank you. Thank you. Greatest people on earth. Greatest. And we have a lot of great people on earth. I have to tell you that, folks. We have a lot of great people on earth. But we have to fight the bad ones. We have to all do it together. Anyone who cannot condemn the hatred, the oppression and violence of radical Islam lacks the moral clarity to serve as our president. Just remember, doing it for many, many years, and now she's saying what she's going to do. She very much caused the problem, when you think about it. Her weakness, her ineffectiveness caused the problem, and now she wants to be president? I don't think so. The Commander-in-Chief of this nation must speak with moral clarity and conviction. Our system of government is the best in the world, and as your president, I will defend our values and speak out against all of those who assault our values in any way, shape, or form. We will be united. Thank you. We will be united and unified as Americans across all backgrounds and all walks of life. Today, we have caught this evil thug who planted the bombs. Thank you, law enforcement. Thank you, police. Great. But the bad part, now we will give him amazing hospitalization. He will be taken care of by some of the best doctors in the world. He will be given a fully modern and updated hospital room. And he'll probably even have room service, knowing the way our country is. And on top of all of that, he will be represented by an outstanding lawyer. His case will go through the various court systems for years. And in the end, people will forget, and his punishment will not be what it once would have been. What a sad situation. We must have speedy but fair trials, and we must deliver a just and very harsh punishment to these people. We must also use whatever lawful methods are available to obtain information from the apprehended suspect to get information before it's no longer timely. And Congress should pass measures to ensure that foreign enemy combatants are treated as such. These are enemies, these are combatants, and we have to be tough and we have to be strong. Hillary Clinton is a weak and ineffective person, and I will tell you, if you choose Donald Trump, these problems are going to go away far, far greater than anybody would think, believe me. She is a weak and ineffective person. Just remember that. Hillary Clinton, and they are looking, oh, they want her so badly. They want her so badly. They want her so badly to be your president, you have no idea. It will be a field day. 
So Hillary Clinton's policies in Iraq, Libya, Syria, other places are largely responsible for the rise of ISIS in the first place. Her attacks on me are all meant to deflect from her record of unleashing this monster of evil on us and all over the world. And her claim that my opposition to radical Islamic terrorism is a — you know, this was something she said today, that it's my strong opposition to these people that's a recruiting tool, and it demonstrates a level of ignorance about the terror threat and its motivations. Now, let me just tell you, she is not the right person to solve a problem that largely her and, Ob and Ob Obama gave us. That Obama gave us. It disqualifies her from being a credible presidential candidate, in my opinion. What do I know, in my opinion? Does everybody agree with me or not? That's all we need is four more years of Obama, except worse. And I will say this. You see that in the polls. You see it all over. You see it outside. She has very, very, very low levels of enthusiasm. I think a lot of people are not going to bother and go to the polls to vote for her. But I know that our people — and this is also in the polls — the highest level of enthusiasm that they've seen. We're going to vote. Obama and Clinton have been silent about Islamic terrorism for many years. That's not lessened the recruiting, but it's increased it. That's what's really happened. It's increased — it's weakness invites aggression. We're weak. Weakness invites aggression. And silence in the face of a brutal enemy — and they have become brutal because we've allowed them to become brutal. It allows it to spread, and that's what's happening all over the world. Now, has anyone ever heard — has anyone ever heard the snake that I read every once in a while? I can do it if you'd like. Should I do it or not? Should I? Uh, because to me, this was written by Al Wilson in the 1990s, and I heard it, and I said, boy, that's exactly what's going on here. The snake, because people are coming across our border, people are coming in and brought into our country, we are going to make potentially the Trojan horse look like something that's very unimportant by comparison. And we don't want to be the ones that in 200 years from now they're reading about allowing something else into our country with a different name than the Trojan horse, but had the same impact. So this is called the snake, and this has to do with people coming into our country, and I think you'll enjoy it. Let's see. And more important than enjoy, I think it'll make a point. On her way to work one morning, down the path along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor, half-frozen snake. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Oh, well, she cried, I'll take you in, like we're doing, and I'll take care of you. Take me in, O oh, tender woman, take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh, tender woman, sighed the broken snake. She wrapped him up all cozy in a curvature of silk and then laid him by the fireside with some honey and some milk. 
Now she hurried home from work that night. As soon as she arrived, she found that pretty snake she'd taken in had been revived. Take me in, no oh tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the broken snake. Now she clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I hadn't brought you in by now, you certainly might have died. Now she stroked his pretty skin, and then she kissed and held him tight. But instead of saying thank you, that snake gave her a vicious bite. Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. I saved you, cried the woman, and you've bit me. Heavens, why? You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Oh, shut up, silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. It's amazing, gonna happen, unless we get very, very, very smart. Oh, don't worry about it, we're gonna build a wall, don't worry about it, we're gonna build a wall. Don't worry about it. We're gonna build a wall, and Mexico's gonna pay for the wall, and we're gonna make great trade deals, and lots of good things are gonna happen. Don't worry about it. So ISIS, is torturing, murdering, executing, and exterminating people in a campaign of genocide. And what is Hillary Clinton's suggestion? That we should censor our vocabulary and never say these certain words. Refusing to say the words radical Islam has not saved a single life and never will. Our president doesn't say the words, and look what's happening here and all over the world. They refuse to say the words, we're presiding over something that the world has not seen. The level of evil is unbelievable. When we went to high school and we went to college, we'd study medieval times. That's when they chopped off heads. Well, we're in medieval times. That's what we are. They chop off heads. They drown people in steel cages. They bury people in the sand. There's never, we've never seen anything like that. I was against going into the war in Iraq, but we got out the wrong way. President Obama did a terrible thing the way he got us out of the war. And by the way, and somebody was telling me, a great expert this weekend, Iraq has essentially been taken over by Iran. All of those lives, all of that money, trillions and trillions of dollars, what have we got? And then on top of it, he got us out the wrong way, and ISIS formed. Great job, President Obama. Great job. Great job. Just like we named our enemy in the Cold War, so too must we name our enemy today. Clinton's comments might not fit the far-left think tanks, but they have no place for someone seeking a job as commander-in-chief. They aren't just naive, but reckless. And they're beneath the high standards of the office that she is seeking. The White House says it's just a war of narratives. Imagine telling that to the thousands of people murdered by this sadistic, evil enemy. 
This is the so-called leadership that's turned ISIS loose on the world and flung our borders wide open, wide open. It's time for tough borders. It's time for common sense. It's time to do things right. We have to put America first. We have to put America first. Obama and Clinton have toppled regimes, displaced millions of people, then opened the door to ISIS to enter our country. This is a not too smart policy. This will go down when people look at this in the years ahead as among the worst foreign policy decisions ever made by any country at any time. We have opened the world to ISIS, and now we have to close those doors. <laughs> Hillary Clinton's decisions overseas have left us with the threat we face today, and her immigration policies will invite this threat onto our shores, and it's already happening. We must stop the massive inflow of refugees, which Hillary Clinton is trying to dramatically increase. Far more than we're taking in now, she wants it dramatically increased. You almost say, is this possible? You almost say, can this even be happening, especially in light of what's going on all over the world? We should temporarily suspend immigration entirely from regions where safe and adequate screening cannot occur. My policy will benefit the millions of wonderful immigrants living here and the wonderful immigrants coming in to our country in the future, because all good and decent, loving people want to live in a good and decent, loving country. Let me emphasize this point. The pro-immigrant position is the position that favors tough screening and tight controls. And we want people to come into our country, but they have to come in legally through a process, and we need extreme screening. All immigrants benefit when we keep out those who do not truly wish to join our society. Immigrants benefit economically in terms of less job competition, and they benefit in terms of safety when we control future admissions into our nation. We want to take care and protect all of our people, including our great, law-abiding, American-loving immigrants. No one has a right to immigrate to this country. It is the job of a responsible government to admit only those who expect to succeed and flourish here and really be proud of what they've done and where they came from. And they have to love our country. They have to love us. What amazing people. You know, Florida, I think we're going to win by a lot. We're going to win by a lot. I can say this. When Hillary comes in, she has very small crowds. That I can tell you. And I hope the press is covering the size of this arena and the crowd here and the thousands that are outside. Which they're not. Which they're not. Pew polling shows that in many of the countries from which we draw large numbers of immigrants, extreme views about religion, such as the death penalty for those who leave the faith, are commonplace. 
For instance, according to Pew, a majority of Afghanistan and Iraq, the people in Afghanistan and Iraq say honor killings of women are often justified. We've admitted around 100,000 from these countries over the last short period of time. And this thug today, they think, came through Afghanistan. What kind of screening procedures were performed? These were difficult subjects, but they must be discussed by all responsible leaders. We have an obligation to discuss them and to come up with the right solution. This is the kind of thing we need to have an honest conversation about when devising screening methods, they have to be good screening methods. They have to be methods that work. And unless we have those methods, sorry, folks, you can't come into the country. Sorry. <laughs> Just look at the San Bernardino horrible shooting and the female shooter who came on a fiancé visa from Saudi Arabia. Defeating this threat will also require the best intelligence gathering in the world. By the way, the detainees being released from Gitmo are returning to the battlefield. You're hearing about that, right? Let them go, let them go, and then they return to the battlefield and everybody's surprised. Is anybody in this room surprised that many that many of those detainees are returning to the battlefield and some immediately? We also need the best protection of classified information. That is the worst situation. Hillary's private email scandal, which put our classified information in the reach of our enemies, disqualifies her from the presidency. Totally. Then she covered up her criminal acts by mass deleting her emails. How about she gets a subpoena from the United States Congress, and after she gets the subpoena, she deletes 33,000 emails plus, and everything's just fine. What is going on? And not only, not only did she delete them, but she bleached them, something that most people have never even heard about. And she destroyed her phones, many the old-fashioned way, with a hammer. Did anyone ever hear of this before? <laughs> this is beneath the dignity of the Oval Office. Our next president must also stand up for America and promote American values. <laughs> Do you all remember President Obama's apology to her? He apologized for the United States. We're sorry. We're so sorry. We're so sorry. His naive words were followed by even more naive actions. The failure to establish a new status of forces agreement in Iraq and the election-driven timetable for withdrawal, a disaster, surrendered our gains in that country and led directly to the rise of ISIS. I oppose going into Iraq, unlike Hillary Clinton, and I oppose the reckless way Obama, Clinton left Iraq. The failures in Iraq were compounded by Hillary Clinton's disaster in Libya. President Obama has since said he regrets Libya as his worst mistake. And you wouldn't know to watch him. But I believe that if you could go back years and he had the decision whether or not to make her Secretary of State. He can never admit this, and I never expect him to, although maybe if he gets a lot of money for a book. But he would choose not to make her Secretary of State. That's what I think, because she was a disaster. She's the one who pushed for the war with one episode of bad judgment after another. And remember, Bernie Sanders, during the debates, said on numerous occasions that Hillary Clinton suffers from bad judgment. She does. So that bad judgment was just a disaster. And we have now the situation that we have, lots of problems all over the world. And yes, ISIS has been launched and launched fully. 
Yet, as she threw the Middle East into violent turmoil, things turned out very well for her. The Clintons made $60 million in gross income while she was Secretary of State. Enough is enough. It's time to break with the corruption, the bad judgment, and the failures. It's time to have a new and great American future. We're going to change our immigration system to reflect American values. Remember, American values. We're going to stop the reckless and costly policy of regime change overseas and instead focus on working in partnership with our allies on a military campaign to utterly destroy ISIS. We have no choice. This effort will require military warfare, but also financial warfare, cyber warfare, and even ideological warfare. We have to beat them at their own game. They're playing the game much better than we are. And youth is going for their version, not our version. Our goal is not to build democracies. Our goal is to defeat. We want to defeat our enemies. And then we want to get back to rebuilding our country. Our country is a mess. Our infrastructure is a disaster. We owe, right now, almost $20 trillion. And our country is in trouble. Enough endless war. It's time to have a real plan for victory. But to win this struggle, we need to be strong at home. My economic plan can be summed up in three very simple words, jobs, jobs, jobs. I am going to massively lower your taxes. That's businesses, and that's middle income, that's everybody. I'm going to get rid of the vast amounts of unnecessary regulations on your businesses and in your life. It's horrible. I'm going to repeal and replace Obamacare. It's a disaster. I'm going to unleash American energy. Unleash American energy. And wait till you see what happens. We'll start paying down our debt. So many things can happen. And even your electric bill will be a lot less, I hope. If we do it properly, I know. I'm going to appoint justices to the Supreme Court who will follow the Constitution. I'm going to rebuild our depleted military and take care of our veterans. I'm going to renegotiate our disastrous trade deals, and they are indeed a disaster. I'm going to put American workers first and fix our rigged system. It's a rigged system, folks. We will rebuild our roads, our bridges, our tunnels, highways, airports, schools, and hospitals. American cars will travel the roads. American planes will soar the skies, and American ships will patrol the seas. American steel will send new skyscrapers into the clouds. American hands will rebuild our nation. American hands. And American energy, mined from American sources, will power this nation. American workers will be hired to do the job. We will put new American steel into the spine of our country. I will fight for every neglected part of this nation. And I will fight to bring us together as one American people. Imagine. 
what our country could accomplish if we started working together as one people, under one God, saluting one American flag. It's time to break with the bitter failures of the past and to embrace a new, inclusive, and prosperous American future. A future of success, togetherness, and unity. A future of fixing our inner cities and our African-American areas of this country that have been treated so badly. Our inner cities are a horror. No jobs, no safety, education is the worst. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix it. You've been hearing that for years and years by the Democrats who have run the inner cities for in some cases, more than 100 years straight. We're going to fix our inner cities, and I'm going to get tremendous votes from the African-American community. And we're going to get tremendous votes from the Hispanic community. We're going to bring jobs back to our country. We're going to bring jobs back to our country. And once more, we're going to have a government of, by, and for the people. <laughs> we will make America, and some people don't like this because it doesn't sound right, wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you.